We're going to look at Romans chapter 8, and this is going to be titled, How to Walk with God. Number one, how are we going to walk with God? We need to nail down the flesh. As we've talked about before, when you're saved, your spirit was made alive and your body died. So since your flesh is dead, there is no sense in walking after the flesh. So every time it rises up, shoot it back into his grave or nail it back to the cross. But number one, we need to nail down the flesh. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Notice the word condemnation. And that's the devil's favorite word that ends in I-O-N, along with damnation. He hates the words like justification, imputation, propitiation, glorification, and all those great words that deal with salvation. But the condemnation here has to do with fleshy condemnation of the believer and not eternal condemnation in hell. Uh, And if a Christian continues to walk in the flesh, then he will see fleshly condemnation. Not when it comes to his soul, because he's eternally secure. But his flesh will see condemnation. Uh, He is leaving his flesh out of the grave instead of putting it back in it. He's letting it come back down off, off the cross and do what it wants. So he will fall right into the grave that the flesh should have been in, covered with dirt. He'll fall right in it himself. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. When you were saved, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which would be the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the spiritual circumcision, the new birth, uh, these things made you free from the law of sin and death. And you are free to walk with God. You can choose to walk with God daily, by nailing down the flesh. How can two walk together except they be agreed, says Amos. So you can't walk with God and walk with the flesh at the same time because they're not going the same direction. Your flesh says, sleep in and do nothing. The Spirit says, get up and do something for God. Your flesh says, listen to bad music like Drake and Imagine Dragons and 21 Pilots and Lady Gaga and Nicki Minaj and other filth. Your spirit says, listen to psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Your flesh says, okay, well, if you're not going to listen to the secular stuff, listen to the contemporary stuff. That way you can sing about Jesus Christ, but you still get that worldly taste, that fix You get that worldly taste in your mouth. But once again, the Spirit comes back and says, listen to psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You see, your flesh is okay with with you settling in the middle. But the Spirit wants exactly what the book says. Nail down the flesh so that you can walk with God. And next, remember what God did for you. Remembering what God did for you will help you to walk with God. How to walk with God, remember what God's done for you. I want to walk with someone like God who's done more for me than anybody's ever done for me. Romans 8.3 says, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. All the law could do for me was show me that I'm a sinner, but it couldn't give me a cure for sin, and it only makes sin seem more tempting because there's a law against the sin. But Jesus Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He fulfilled the law. He never broke the law. And through him, I can have his righteousness applied to my soul, and it'll be like I never broke the law. So the Lord Jesus Christ left the riches and glory of heaven to come down to this old world and die on the cross for your sins. And Jesus Christ condemned sin in the flesh because he preached against it. He said, go and sin no more. He condemned sin 
by never sinning one time. And he was sent in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet he never sinned. 1 Peter 2.22 said, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus Christ came down in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet he never sinned. And he lived a sinless life for you, died on the cross for you, was buried and rose again the third day for you. And the Bible says his visage was marred more than any man. It says he gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. He hid not his face from shame and spitting. Uh, they beat him, they whipped him, they spit in his face, pulled, out, pulled the hair out of his face, put a robe on him and a crown of thorns on him to mock him. Wouldn't you want to walk with someone who did that for you, left the riches of heaven and came down in likeness of sinful flesh? Uh, you want to get autographs from your favorite preacher or your favorite singer or your favorite actor, but you can't have a real relationship with these people, but you can have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. You can walk with God every day. Remembering what he did for you will help you walk with him. Romans 8, 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us, not by us. Jesus Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. According to Romans 10.4, Jesus Christ is in us, and he fulfilled the law, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. I have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ on my soul. So remember what the Lord did for you if you want to walk with God. Next, if you want to walk with God, you need to think spiritually. Romans 8, 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. If your mind is on the things of the flesh, then all you are concerned with is pleasure preservation, just feeding your face and feeling good all the time, watching what you want to watch, hearing what you want to hear, looking at what you want to look at. Your flesh wants to do what it wants to do. It says, me first, you next, then the devil, and then God somewhere at the bottom. The only time the flesh wants to do right is if it will help him do wrong. He doesn't have a good motive. And if you don't give him exactly what he wants, he'll settle in the middle. But he doesn't want to do what's right. But the spirit, it won't settle in the middle. It wants to do exactly what's right, exactly what the Bible says. And if you're fleshly minded, you're thinking about the things of the world. But Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So think about your new body you're going to get. Think about new Jerusalem. Think about a new heaven and a new earth. Think about things that are new, that's really going to be new that you're going to get in eternity. Romans 8, 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you're carnally minded, meaning if you're worldly minded, then all you're going to think about is things that will lead you to an early grave. Sin starts out with a thought. A life of ruin starts out with wicked thinking. And have you ever noticed how the bad things that you want to do have something bad as a result? All the bad things that people just love so much and act like they're just the greatest things in the world always lead to something bad. Like the people at work, what are they doing on the weekend? going out drinking and partying, things like that. But what does these things do? Smoking, people enjoy smoking. What does it cause? It causes disease. Drinking causes disease and car wrecks. Fornication causes STDs. Listening to dirty music and watching dirty movies make you desensitized to drinking and fornication and other sins. Uh, stepping out on your wife will result in a busted up home. Your kids will be heartbroken. Your wife will be heartbroken. Your life will never be the same. 
ever noticed the things that God doesn't want you to do are always things that would lead to something tragic happening in your life? So you think that God's just no fun and he's against the things you want to do, but that's only because he wants what's best for you. And he can see what will happen if you continue in these sins. Uh, maybe he's looking out for you by warning you not to do these things. So to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The most peaceful you will ever feel as a Christian is when you have victory over your pet sins. Your sins are confessed and you're doing what God wants you to do. If that's you, then you feel like you can call on God at any moment and get a prayer answered and you'll be in perfect peace. So to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So if you're carnally minded, then you have the world on your mind. And James 4, 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The world really isn't your friend. It's two-faced. It makes you think it is, but it really ain't. It's like that guy at work that always comes up to you and says, Hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? And then the next minute, he's lying about you, backstabbing you, talking bad about you behind your back. That's the way the world is. This world doesn't like spiritual things. This world doesn't like real Bible-believing Christianity. Now, it likes fake Christianity. Ever wonder why you have to go to the internet most times just to buy real Bible-believing material? Because they don't sell it at the local bookstore or at the Lifeway Christian bookstore. That's just the the modern carnal junk. That's because that junk is settling in the middle. That way you can get the world but still talk about God at the same time. But it mostly results in you talking about another Jesus that's not the Jesus of the Bible. But the flesh really doesn't mind. As long as you give it that taste of the world that it's looking for, you can throw Jesus' name in there. You can say little pious spiritual things. But as long as it's got that little taste of the world, it'll settle with that. But you'll always end up going back to the real hard stuff because... Because it just keeps the taste of the world in your mouth. And I mean, I myself, I mean, I like music that I shouldn't listen to. I choose not to listen to it because I know that it's against God. But there's music, you hear it when you go through the store and it's catchy and it sounds good. Your flesh still likes it. My flesh still likes music that it liked before I was saved. But I choose not to listen to it. Because I want to please God. And say that I went and started listening to contemporary music. That would make my flesh get back craving that old music. See, I've got the flesh beat down to where I'm not craving the bad music. But if I go to the listen to the contemporary, what's going to happen? It's going to remind me of all the good songs that I used to listen to before I was saved. And I'm just going to start right back up on that again. And see... The, the hard music, the bad stuff, sounds better than the contemporary music. All, all the contemporary music is, is just like buying an off-brand of the, the secular worldly music. The secular worldly music, well, they're both worldly, but the secular music sounds better. It's more catchy. It's like all the people that couldn't make it in the secular music went to the contemporary music But that stuff just keeps the world, the taste of the world in your mouth. But Romans 8, 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you are walking the opposite way of God, you can't please Him. And if you are walking the opposite way of God, God obviously isn't pleasing you either. Because you've got Him in the back of your mind either way. He's not in the the forefront of your life, making decisions for you. So next, if you're going to walk with God, remember why you were created in the first place. 
And Revelation 4.11 tells us this. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So this is the meaning of life that sums up why we are all here. This explains why you were ever even born. The answer is to bring pleasure to God. But if you're going to please God, you can't be in the flesh. Now, there is a part of you that once you were born again, it no longer has anything to do with the flesh. The new man in you is born again and always pleases God. But that outward man, the flesh, can't please God. So you have to walk with the new man. You have to let him lead. Your first priority shouldn't be to make everyone think you're a good Christian. Your first part priority should be to please God. Your relationship with God is the most important thing after you get saved. And Colossians 1.10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. 1 John 3.22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. So notice those verses talk more about pleasing. Our purpose is to please the Lord. And Romans 8.8 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're going to walk with God, remember why you were created in the first place, and that's to please Him. So everything that you do, you need to say, Does this please God? Will this displease God? So walk with God by realizing why you were created in the first place. The Lord wanted someone to walk with Him, and next, walk with God by, re by realizing He lives in you. The Bible says in Colossians, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Romans 8 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, once you get saved, the Holy Spirit came to live in you. He didn't wait around for you to obtain some special talent or gift. He came into you the moment you received the free gift of salvation. He didn't say, okay, now you're saved. If you can speak in tongues for me, then you'll have me. He didn't say that. Now, he got in you before you ever even had a chance to do anything for him. The moment you believe the gospel, before you had a chance to do any type of Christian service, he was already in you. The verse said in Romans 8 9, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, showing that if you don't have the Spirit, then you're not even saved. Romans 8 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So, like I said, when you get saved, your body died. You were divorced from the flesh so that you could marry Jesus Christ. The body is dead because of sin. Sin brings death, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and you have His righteousness if you've been born again. The Spirit that is in you is righteous, and it is the Spirit that made the worlds that's in you. And realizing that the Spirit of God is in you will help you walk with God. If you're walking with the world and the Holy Spirit is in you, it's always going to nudge to go back the other way. So listen to the voice telling you to go the other way. He speaks to you in His Word. Are you listening to what you read? Are you even reading the Word? Romans 8.11 But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Holy Spirit that is in you is what raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. And if it raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, it can cause the dead in Christ to rise at the rapture and give you a new body at the rapture. It will quicken your mortal body. Quicken means to make alive. Your body is dead. It needs quickening. And once you get this new body, you will no longer have to worry about sin. You will no longer have to worry about if you're walking with God because then it will be all natural then it will be as easy as breathing. There won't be any outside things that are pulling you the other way. Romans eight thirteen through 15 says, For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. 
But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, of the body you shall live. If someone just lives their everyday life fulfilling the desires of the flesh, then it will lead them to an early grave, because for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. The flesh wants to eat what it shouldn't eat, wants to go dangerous places it shouldn't go, wants to do what it shouldn't do. Everything it wants to do gives a temporary thrill, but the thrill will only kill eventually. You have to mortify the deeds of the body. Colossians 3, 5 says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanness, inordinate affection, and so on. So bring your body into subjection. Don't let the flesh control you. You need to control the flesh. If you let the flesh control too long, then you'll be laying on the ground with it on top of you and you won't be able to get it off because the flesh is dead. And if you're laying on the ground and it's on top of you, it'll be hard to lift off because that's just dead weight on you. The flesh is dead. And so you don't need to let it be in control. But this has been how to walk with God. And this is aimed at saved people because if you're not saved, then you can't walk with God. And if you've made it all the way through this lesson and you know that you're not saved, I want to tell you how to be saved. The reason you need to be saved is because of your sin. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul tells us the gospel. The gospel is the good news. And he says that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He shed his blood on a cross for you and me because of our sin. Christ died for our sins. Uh, he lived a sinless life but took all of our sin and became sin for us on the cross and paid for all that sin. He was buried and rose again the third day. And when he rose again, that proved that he was God. It proved he was God in the flesh. And what you have to do to be saved is come to Jesus Christ the best way you know how. Come to him as the guilty sinner that you are the best way you know how. And put your faith on him to be saved. Rely on him and what he did on the cross to be your payment for sin. And you just come to him the best way you know how. And he'll save anybody. He's whosoever will. He said in Romans ten thirteen, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts sixteen thirty one says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So come to him the best way you know how. Uh, and believe on him so that you can be saved and walk with God.